And PIX11 is your election headquarters as New Yorkers get ready to head to the polls to cast their ballots in several races across the city. One of the most hotly contested races is in Brooklyn between Democratic City Councilman Justin Brannon and Republican Ari Kagan. So a newly redrawn district map, which includes Bay Ridge, Coney Island, parts of Bath Beach, pitting these two sitting councilmen against each other. And joining us this morning is City Councilman Justin Brennan, who currently represents the 43rd District, which covers Bay Ridge. So, Councilman, good morning. Good to see you here this morning. Oh, always good to be here, guys. Uh, so you've served in the City Council since 2018, representing Bay Ridge, Diker Heights, Bensonhurst, right? You were born in Bay Ridge. But yep. the demographics of that neighborhood certainly have changed over the years. There was the whole redrawing of the lines now, which is why you're now against... Councilman Ari, uh, Ari Kagan, what would you say are the top three issues for you heading into this election season? I think for me, obviously, it's it's getting to know the new parts of my district yeah. um, and, and um, communicating to people what I've been able to do in my years as a councilman so far and what I, I hope to do for the people of Coney Island and the new parts of my district in mm -hmm. Graves and in Coney Island um, as being just one of the most responsive council members there is. Um, no problem to me is bit too big or too small. Uh, you know, I, look, I think people, obviously every four years we go out and vote for president, and yep. that's super mm -hmm. important, but local elections really matter. And yep. I would argue local elections are even more important than who your president is, because if you got a problem at your kid's school or you need a pothole to get filled or you want to get a new park renovated, you don't call the president. You call mm -hmm. your local elected official. Right. Um, so it's really about getting out there now and making sure people know what's at stake and how important local elections are. Yeah, yeah sometimes people tend to forget that. For Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So your opponent, Ari Kagan, he currently uh, represents District 47. He won as a Democrat, then switched parties to a Republican. Yeah. Now this newly the new district, the way it's redrawn, it's become more conservative. So how does that affect you then as a moderate? So I wouldn't say it's become more conservative. I think, look, I think Southern Brooklyn has always been a place where people are going to vote for the person over the party. Uh, and I think, unfortunately for my opponent, that doesn't help him because I think certainly right now in our politics we have a crisis of confidence where there's so much misinformation and disinformation. People don't know what to believe. We have a guy now who was elected as a Democrat and basically sold out everything he believed in just to kind of hope to keep his job. It's not a good sign. You know, um, and I think it, I think it's reflected in what we're hearing when we're talking to voters that they feel betrayed. They feel like they voted this guy in as a Democrat mm -hmm. and now he sold them out. He's gone all the way far, far extreme right, like further to the right of like Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis. Um, and that's just completely out of line and out of step with the values of Southern Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure that people know that. Uh, and we're going to talk to him tomorrow about the, the, the flipping of the parties. But you're here today, so I want to get your take. Because Bay Ridge is home to a large Palestinian community. Yeah. This is obviously top of headlines right now with what's playing out in Israel. Last weekend's rally led to a dozens of arrests, specifically in Brooklyn, right? So where do you stand on the issue? And how do you ensure that everybody's voice is heard when they're at the table here? It's a great question. Um, and it's, it's super important, especially in my district, because um, I represent one of the largest Palestinian communities in the entire city right. in Bay Ridge. Um, it's personal to me. I have Jewish family living in Tel Aviv. Um, and look, I think it's important that politicians come out first and foremost and condemn the Hamas terrorist attacks unequivocally uh, and immediately. Um, but it's also important that we acknowledge the, ev the fear of everyday Israelis and Palestinians. And a lot of my constituents who have family back home and they're scared to death. And look, what I think is this, city council people, we don't, we don't, we have no effect on foreign policy, right, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. We can't make things better over there, but we certainly have the power not to make things worse here. No. And unfortunately, my opponent is using the Israel-Hamas conflict um, to score political points and divide people. And it's a really, really tense time with anxiety is super high for New Yorkers. First and foremost, you got to make sure that people feel safe on the streets of New York, make people that make sure they feel heard, and make sure that you're, you're fighting for peace, that you want everyone to be safe, and that you're recognizing that the death of, of innocent Palestinians and Israelis is equally atrocious and horrible. Um, but, but this isn't supposed to be a political football. This is, these are human lives. These are innocent lives. Um, and there's, you know, family back home where people are scared to death. Yeah. So to turn that into a political fight where you're trying to score points, like this is some football game, mm -hmm. is just vile. Mm -hmm. um, and it's insulting, frankly, to a lot of my constituents yes. who 
are everyday Palestinians and condemned Hamas the same. They're, they're, you know, they have nothing to do with Hamas. These are everyday Palestinians. So it's important that you call out anti-Semitism. You also have to call out Islamophobia. You have yes, to bring people. Your job as an elected official is to bring people together, not divide people, okay. especially at a time like this. You know, another polarizing issue when people are talking about feeling safe at home is the migrant crisis. Sure. A lot of folks in that particular district don't want migrant shelters. Mayor Adams has said there's not enough room. Where, where do you stand on that and what should be done? So I think we, I think all levels of government should be focusing on expanding TPS eligibility. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should constantly be thinking of new places to warehouse people. Mm -hmm. It's just not the answer. We have to be focusing on getting migrants on their own two feet so that they can contribute to our economy and become taxpayers and become New Yorkers. Um, constantly opening new shelters is it's just no end in sight. I've been very clear since day one. New Yorkers' compassion is unlimited, but our resources are not. This is a national crisis that demands a national response. The city of New York cannot be, it, we, the city of New York cannot be expected to manage or finance a, a, an international migrant crisis. Mm -hmm. The federal government has to step up. And I'm a Democrat. I'm fine to call out, call out Joe Biden. Unlike my opponent, I will call out Democrats when I think they're wrong. The federal government's got to step up here because they're leaving they're leaving New York City out to dry. All right, Councilman Justin Brennan, we got to leave it there because we're giving right. you both equal time. But I can uh, I can hear the passion in your voice. Appreciate <laughs> you coming in this morning. And tomorrow morning, Ari Kagan will be here in the studio, 7:45, same time, same amount of time to continue the conversation. <laughs> equal time for everybody here. And remember, early voting starts on Saturday, runs through Sunday, November 5th. Election Day is the all important date of Tuesday, November 7th. Make sure your voice is heard, like he said, local.